Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's take a closer look at load point one. The forces involved here, we have a separate drawing so you can see them. Here notice we still have the force pulling down called F1, but we also have the tension in the cable. Now the tension on the, on the next section here is going to be pulling, first of all, in the same direction as the cable. So now we have a little note here that says the direction of the tension is in the same direction as the next cable segment. So the next cable segment is right here in the dotted line. And so the tension acting on this point right here due to the tension in this cable will be in the same direction as the cable. And so we can say that it has an X and a Y component as well. We have the reactionary forces here at A, and you can see that we have a component in the y direction and a component in the x direction. The distance from the line drawn from A downward here to the point P1 in the horizontal direction is called X1, and the distance from point P1, and I might as well label point P1 right here, this is point P1, right there, and the distance from this point right here, the horizontal line drawn from the support point A to P1, the vertical distance there is called Y1. If we're going to determine all the various forces at the various locations at A, at P1, the tension in the section and so forth, we're going to need to make some assumptions. It turns out that we can use the very same principles to hanging cables as we can to any static situation. With other words, we can say that all the forces in the x-direction must add up to zero. All the forces in the y-direction must add up to zero, because if they didn't, there would be an acceleration in those directions. And also, even though we're dealing with cables and they're flexible, we can actually say that the moments about any point anywhere along the cable, those moments must also equal zero. Now that one may be a little bit harder to understand, because you say, well, how can you do that? Because cables are flexible. It doesn't matter because of the laws of physics. We can say that the sum of all the moments about any point somewhere in the cable system must equal zero. So let's apply that to this particular part of the cable. First of all, let's add up all the forces in the X direction. If I look at all the forces in the X direction, I recognize that the X component of the tension acting on that section of the cable and the X component of the reactionary force at support A also acts on this cable. Now this will be in the negative direction, this will be in the positive direction. What I can then write is that this is equal to minus a to the x plus t to the x must add up to zero. From that, I can then conclude that if I bring a sub x to the other side, that the magnitude of a sub x in the left direction must equal the magnitude of t sub x in the right direction. In other words, the tension on this section of the cable in the x direction equals the component in the x direction at the support point, the component of the reactionary force. Let's add up all the forces in the y direction. Now we have one additional force here. We have the force due to the load, it's acting downward. The tension in the y direction is acting downward. And then the reactionary force at A in the vertical direction is acting upward. Therefore, this is equal to a sub y, that's a positive quantity, minus the load and minus the y component in the tension. If we then solve this equation for A sub y, by taking these other two components and bringing them to the other side, turning the equation around, I can say that A sub y is equal to the sum of F sub 1 plus the tension in the y direction. The magnitude of the Reactionary force at A in the y direction equals the load plus the tension in the y direction. And finally, we can calculate the moment about point 1, or we could have also calculated the moment about point A, the support point A, but let's do it about point 1. First of all, we have A sub x, which causes a counterclockwise torque. Therefore, that is a positive quantity, so we multiply this times the distance between the line of action of the force and the pivot point. So we took the pivot point at 1, there is the distance, the moment arm, and there is the force A sub x. So we get a positive A sub x multiplied times y1. 
and then we have a sub y, which causes a torque in the opposite direction, so therefore that's a negative moment. This is equal to minus a sub y times the distance. Again, this is the line of action of the force. There's a pivot point, there's a perpendicular distance, and so we write x sub 1. And so this helps us find the values for a sub x and a sub y if y1 and x1 were known. At least at this point, we would find the relative values of those two. But this is how we try to analyze a cable situation where we have concentrated loads. We sum up all the force in the x and y direction, and we sum up all the moments about any of the points, then we solve the equation simultaneously, and that's how we solve problems with hanging cables. Now to show you how well you can use that, for example, let's say that we're going to calculate the moment about point A in this situation right here. Let's do that as an example, because at first when you see this, how can you even do that with hanging cables, but it does work. So let's sum up the moment about point A, and in this particular situation, notice first of all, these two forces will go to zero because there's no distance between the pivot point and the, action, the lines of action of those forces. Here we have F1 that causes a clockwise moment, which means that's a negative F1 times the distance, well, this is the line of action of force, there's the distance X1. So minus F1 times X1 minus F2 times x2 and minus f3 times x3 because in each of the cases it causes a clockwise moment therefore we get negative values for that but now we have two additional forces we have b sub x which causes a well it also causes because it's acting in this direction right here it also causes no in this case b sub x causes a c a counterclockwise. Ah, that's interesting. F1, F2, and F3 causes a clockwise moment about point A, but B sub X causes a counterclockwise moment because this would cause it to turn in this direction. So that is plus B sub X in the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to pivot point A would be this distance right here, which is distance D. And then we have B sub Y, which also would cause a counterclockwise motion, and that would also be positive, so plus B sub Y, and the distance there would be the distance L. And here you can imagine if X1, X2, and X3 are known quantities, if we know where the forces are acting, and that's a good assumption, and if we know the magnitude of these forces, these load forces, F1, F2, and F3, then this equation right here, and of course, this must equal zero, can't forget the equal zero. Then you can see if you know D and L, and of course that should also be known, you can then figure out what B sub X and B sub Y are if you have one additional equation that has as unknowns B sub X and B sub Y. So you'll need a second equation to solve that. But what I wanted to show you is that using these equations, the sum of the moments about various points along the cable or about the endpoints will give you a lot of information as to the values of those particular forces. And that's how it's done.